the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, that was our daughter. All right, and she's she just lost a tooth, so that's why the invisible uh, actually came out different. Uh, as you can see, in the presentation today, we're going to be talking about the growth of education with the rise of the East as they go as well. Now, as you can see on there, this is brought to you today by myself, Matthew Schultz, Leanne, Nicholas, and Jose. Now, everybody goes to the school, all right? No matter where you're at, for the most part, the majority of the people that we have here in the United States goes to education. They go to some form of educational school. Their instruction that they get is complicated for some situations. Some schools will actually draw raffle tickets. Some schools will require some payment to get in there. And some schools are public. Now with this, with the rise of the East, what we're going to be covering today go ahead. All right, is many different, uh, <laughs> many different aspects of this. Now, education now in the present is what Leanne's going to be covering. Go ahead. Change in education from now into the future, Nicholas is going to be covering. And the finance of education as we know it from today up to the future finances, such as financial aid, special public assistance that can help with you, and the hard-working people that are paying it out of pocket. So to start off, we're going to turn it over to Leanne, and she's going to go ahead and start with hers. So the way our education system now is, effect, is combating the rise of the East is we're starting programs that are immersion programs. There are about 12 states that already have migrant immersion programs. These are programs where the students are going to school and not only are they just learning English and the normal basic stuff, but they're also being taught everything in Chinese or Mandarin and learning about that culture. So the states that have immersion programs already is Idaho, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, New York, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Texas, Utah, Washington, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. Uh, so Idaho, we have one here locally, even just in Boise. In fact, our daughter goes there. So it starts at kindergarten. She has an all, there's an all-day program. The first half of the day is English. The second half of the day is Mandarin. Um, they're supposed to spend all day um, in the Mandarin class talking Mandarin and learning Mandarin. They haven't all quite got there yet, but they're working on it. Um, so this is a video of kind of the typical conversation between the teacher, Mrs. Zhao, and Annalisa. district where they can get scholarships to go off to college. Um, and the way this will be helpful for our students taking the immersion program is as they graduate with already knowing being extremely fluent in a second language, um, they'll be able to take that off to college and have better choices in college. And even when they graduate college, that'll help them in the workforce um, because a lot of stuff is heading to include um, Asian countries. So this will give her a little bit of an edge to be able to um, marketable to companies and that sort of thing. So I did the uh, future of education and what it's going to look like, you know, in like 15 years, you know, 20 years, you know, and how it's going to grow. So as we all know, the future of education is starting to become more technology-based, you know, with tablets and some more computers, you know, being started at a younger age. And one form of this technology that is becoming an option that I found in the research was 
video games as a form of technology, because video games, you know, they're really popular among all kids, you know, throughout school, you know, because they help them, you know, relax or relieve stress or something. Um, so, video games, since they are good for comprehension and like retaining information when kids are involved with them if they like them, but they don't teach you no know, real world applicability. But that's where the teachers could come in, is that they could use video games as like a tool and then teach the students how to apply, you know, whatever the video game is teaching to you know their real world activities. And then another you know thing that we're probably gonna see in the future of education is more immersion programs as because they're becoming really popular because learning in two languages increases and it's just better for the students and it helps them in the future because it, you know, they get more of a cultural base with the both languages and it's also good for businesses, you know, that you know, when they get a job that they look better and they can help their business grow, you know, by becoming more international or not. And then so that's So um, I just kind of talked about maybe some like financial aspects of the future, and um, you know one thing that um, people want is a free a free education, and you know to be honest, I'm for free education. I'm all for it, but for the most part, it's a socialistic idea, a socialist idea. So, I mean, you know, here in America, people say socialists, they're like, oh man, you know, no, no, this is America, we're not being socialists. So, in, you know, I agree with that. I, I uh, agree with um, ha having a capitalist economy, because, you know, I, I believe in um, competition. So, um, how can we get free school? Um, can you go to the next slide? So, you just want to? Yeah. Can So this is uh, the total federal spending, and it's 3.8 trillion. As you can see, a big chunk of it is Medicare, and uh, military, and uh, Social Security, unemployment, and labor. So unemployment, we shouldn't be giving out so much unemployment to people that don't want to work and stay you know, at home doing nothing. We can give that money and help teachers pay, uh, get paid more, because as of right now, teachers are making uh, 42,000 a year. That's the average in the US, K through 12. And I mean, that's not bad money, but I think, I personally think that teachers should get paid more. And um, education, look how small it is. I mean, we can, we can take out so much money out of this and take it towards education. And um, like, we're gonna need more teachers, so maybe free school would be a good idea. Like free community college. All right, so as you guys have seen and heard already, all right, there's a lot of different aspects that come into play when it comes to education. You have what we have going on now with the immersion programs, right? You got a chance to see a video of an immersion program in effect, right? It was unscripted and it was natural for our daughter to actually portray. Uh, now the thoughts and progress that we actually have with this is where are we gonna be in the future? As Nick was stating up there, you know, they, they have interactive learning. They have the game systems that you can actually use to learn. Teachers can make a big role uh, when it comes to teaching the students as they go through. And one of the important things to remember is that you, as individuals, can make a difference on this. It's who you elect, it's who, you know, what involvement you have if you have children, or even if it's not your own children, it might be a niece or nephew, what type of involvement do you have? So as you saw there, are you ready for the future? Good. This concludes our presentation today, and of course our work cited. Are there any questions for us? All right, if there are no questions, thank you very much.